Good afternoon, everybody. It is the afternoon of Tuesday, May 9th. Uh, we are back from recess and we have two proclamations to uh, celebrate before we get on with the rest of today's business. And the first proclamation is a an on, uh, celebration of Jewish American Heritage Month. Uh, and that will be led by myself, Council Vice President Friedson, and Council Member Katz. And if everybody who is here to celebrate Jewish American Heritage Month can come down and join us. Come on down. Plenty of space. Slide over here. So, so this is the first time we are actually recognizing Jewish American Heritage Month. And a few weeks ago, we recognized um, Holocaust Remembrance Day. And we do a number of other celebrations and remembrances, but the three of us, the three Jewish council members, thought it was really important to have this proclamation today, recognizing the increase in hate among the Jewish community. And as we reflect upon the Holocaust and recognize that the hate that was applied to members of the Jewish community were also applied to members of the LGBTQ plus community, black and brown members of Europe, and also uh, political dissidents uh, and so here we are celebrating Jewish American Heritage Month, recognize that 10% of Montgomery County's residents are Jewish, but also that an overwhelming proportion of the hate that's been exhibited in our community has been towards the Jewish community. And so we stand in solidarity saying that we are important members of the community. We have provided so many things throughout history for the United States and that we all stand in solidarity with all members of our community who just want to be safe. And so that is what today is all about. It's about loving our neighbors, celebrating our heritage, and making sure that we form a more perfect union. And so with that, I'll turn it over to Vice President Friedson. Thank you so much, Council President Glass. I am really honored uh, to be able to join you, Council President and Council Member Katz, to recognize for the first time ever at the County Council Jewish American Heritage Month, recognizing that I have had the privilege joining my colleagues to commemorate Yom HaShoah, Holocaust Remembrance. We spend so much of our time and our energy in our relationship with the Jewish community, being part of the Jewish community, talking about triumph over tragedies. But it is not the tragedies that define Jewish people. And it's not just what we have withstood and what we have fought against, it's what we have fought for. Uh, what we have contributed to society, to this country and so many other countries when we talk about law and philosophy and science and culture. And really today is about that. It's not just about the traditional commemoration as we have done uh, in, in, in acknowledging, which we need to acknowledge so that we never forget those darkest chapters of human history, those darkest chapters of Jewish history, uh, but that we take some time as well to celebrate the contributions of the Jewish community, the contributions of culture, and everything that we have to be proud of, uh, everything that we have to stand for so that we remember why we are standing up against hate, why we were pushing back against anti-Semitism, and why we need to continue to band together to fight against all forms of bigotry, all forms of hatred, and all forms of xenophobia, anti-Semitism, and otherwise that we know is dramatically and unfortunately on the rise. So very proud to be here uh, in this positive light uh, to celebrate all of the contributions. And with that, let me turn it over to Councilmember Katz. 
Thank you very much, Notice, and I'm between the president and the vice president. What a good day this is, right? <laughs> um, as was mentioned, we are celebrating the, the Heritage Month, and that's so very important. But I would like to, to highlight three Jewish Americans with ties to Montgomery County. And um, Jewish American businessman Adolf, Adolphus Simeon, who was a Sephardic Jew, was a philanthropist and a businessman, and he was an advisor for several residents and an ally to the Jewish community. Upon moving to Washington, D.C., he was elected to the House of Delegates, and in 1881 helped Claire Barton establish the American Red Cross, whose original home was located in Glen Echo. The next person we should mention is in June, in, in 1913, Julius Rosenwald, the son of Jewish uh, German immigrants, was a successful entrepreneur, Sears, in Chicago. In 1908, after the three-day deadly race riots in his hometown of Springfield, Illinois, he partnered with Booker T. Washington, a trustee at the Tuskegee Institute, and provided funding for thousands thousands of schools to be built for African-American students in 15 states, one of which is including Montgomery County's own Rosenwald School located in Poolsville on Jerusalem Road in the Ag Reserve. The last person I'm going to mention is Jonas Salk. He was born to Russian Jewish immigrants in New York City. He became a virologist and medical researcher who conducted research out of, out of the barn on the Casey Community Center. Next, on 355 in Gaithersburg, he had uh, Mr. Casey, who, who I knew Mr. Casey. Um, actually, the story goes that Mr. Casey had worked for Franklin Delano Roosevelt's administration. And of course, polio was very important to Franklin Delano Roosevelt. And the story goes that the president called Mr. Casey one day and says there's a doctor in NIH that's working on a vaccine. They have no space for him. Do you have anything? And Mr. Casey said, I have a barn in Gaithersburg. And that's where it was developed, in that barn. And it was in the mid-50s. We stand together. There are people throughout the world, but we stand together right here in Montgomery County thanking each and every one who has who uh, come forward to help our community, to combat anti-Semitism in our county, including our schools, I see many teachers, and build solidarity against anti-Semitism and all forms of hate. My colleagues have heard me say many more times than they care to, I guess, that I am someone who sincerely believes a community is a family, and our family stands together to be strong. Thank you very much. Oh, always a good history lesson from Councilmember Katz. Um, uh, what we'd like to do now is just uh, let everybody introduce themselves and, and share a message if appropriate. Um, I'm very glad to be here today and see the county uh, recognize uh, Jewish American Heritage Month. Um, I work hard in the community um, working with people and sharing w what anti-Semitism is and how to recognize it and how to stop it. So I am so thrilled to be sharing um, the, the joy and the celebration of being Jewish in Montgomery County. Oh, and my name is Sue Stolov and I live in Bethesda and have two kids. Thank you. <laughs> Um, I am Meredith Weisel. I'm the regional director for ADL, the Anti-Defamation League's regional office, but I'm also a very proud resident of Montgomery County up in the Gaithersburg area. And what's wonderful about today is we tend to talk a lot about the negative and all the rise in anti-Semitism and other forms of hate and extremism. This is a day to celebrate about Jewish American heritage and about all the wonderful things, the history lesson, thank you, Councilmember Katz, um, and all the wonderful things that we really are contributing and that we are just a wonderful community here. And I'm really proud to live in a community that recognizes how important that is, so thank you. 
I'm Debbie Ezrin. I am the executive director of Temple Beth Demi in Rockville, and I am a proud resident of the greatest city in the world, Gaithersburg. Um, <laughs> our congregation is home to, I actually just ran a report this morning, um, more than 3,000 children and adults from throughout Montgomery County are officially part of our Temple Bethany community. And so on behalf of all of them, I want to say thank you for the recognition uh, by the council um, that celebrates Jewish families and community um, that embraces the diversity of our community um, and that continues to fund the very important security grants that are really important to all of us serving the Jewish community. Um, the world is full of a lot of hate, but there's a lot of love in Montgomery County. So thank you for your leadership and for having this day. I'm Cantor Larry Eschler. I'm the Cantor at Temple Beth at Me in Rockville. And uh, we have a, a saying that in, uh, in Judaism that life is a it's a very narrow bridge, but to not make yourself afraid. A lot of people say, don't be afraid, but it's a reflexive verb that says, don't make yourself afraid. So the work is hard, and we go forward with it, but the idea is to know that we are surrounded with each other, and that with each other, we can make anything go forward. So thank you. My name is Mark Cohen. <clears throat> Pardon me, I'm the principal at Seneca Valley High School in uh, Germantown. Uh, very proud to uh, serve as a leader in the uh, Montgomery County Jewish Educators Alliance, uh, where we uh, stand by and support students and staff uh, in our community, uh, most recently as we address issues of hate uh, in our community. Uh, and I'll simply share that as a people, uh, we're a people of action. Uh, we believe that we need to take steps to repair the world and I'm really proud of the fact that this organization has stepped forward under Andrew's leadership uh, to do just that. And so I'll turn it over to Andrew. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Andrew Winter. I'm the principal at Ritchie Park Elementary School and the, one of the founders of Montgomery County Jewish Educators Alliance. Um, I started the organization back in January uh, after the unfortunate events uh, that were happening in our schools and really wanted to, to see how we could be proactive uh, in trying to address things not always reactionary and also look at opportunities for um, educational opportunities within the schools, age appropriate, of course, uh, for Holocaust education and, and so forth. So uh, it's been a, a whirlwind of five months and we're delighted that we were invited here. So we thank you, uh, all, all, all the council, I should say. Uh, and. Uh, you know, just want to make a difference and support our students and staffs uh, in our schools and the community as a whole. I'm Linda Rosenzweig. <clears throat> I'm president of AJC Washington Region. Um, I'm also a um, grandchild and child of Holocaust survivors, and I've lost many members of my family in the Holocaust. Um, AJC, in addition to, I'm fortunate enough to work with Sue Stoloff in doing the anti-Semitism training, but as we are so proud that Montgomery County here is stepping up and is among the government entities that is recognizing Jewish American Heritage Month and, this, and helping us celebrate the contributions that Jews have made to American fabric of society. Uh, I'm Rabbi Michael Safra from B'nai Israel Congregation. Uh, we call it Rockville, but I guess it's technically Montgomery County unincorporated. Um, <laughs> But glad to be here. Uh, the message I gave to uh, our congregation uh, this this Saturday in honor of Jewish American Heritage Month is very similar to what we heard from our council members, uh, that this is a month to celebrate the contributions that Jewish people have made and continue make, to make uh, to the society, to the betterment of our society, uh, in line with their Jewish values. So thank you for honoring this, this month with us. Hi, I'm Linda Lipson. I'm a new ADL regional board member, and I'm also a member of Congregation Bethel and have had two children who graduated from Walt Whitman High School. So I'm thrilled to be here. I'm excited that you are giving recognition to um, Jew, Jewish Americans and what we've done. I was, it was great to hear about Jonas Salk, who is actually a distant relative. Um, so I will share that with my family. And uh, I thank the County Council for giving recognition um, and, and joining in the fight against anti-Semitism. Hi, I'm Deborah Miller, the Director of Government and Community Relations for the JCRC of Greater Washington. And it is a privilege to be here 
today and to hear about the history, some of it I didn't know, and also to be history making along with the council. I'm grateful for the work that they do to support not only the Jewish community, but all faith communities and all people who live here trying to thrive and lead a, a, a rich and fulfilling life. So I'm, I'm grateful for the council members who provide security grants for all communities. Hi, my name is Ariel Schwartz. I serve as a political coalitions director at the American Israel Public Affairs Committee. And I focus on educating leaders in the community about the US-Israel relationship. And I just wanted to thank everyone up here, everyone in the audience, the elected body for doing the work to move this community and this country forward. So thank you. Hi, I'm Gary Pokers. I'm the senior rabbi at uh, Temple Beth Ami uh, here in, in Rockville and also a proud member of the board of the JCRC. Um, it seems to me that for most Americans who are not Jewish, when we think of Jews, the first thing that comes to mind is anti-Semitism and that this has been, the, this, this has been the, the narrative that's been repeated over and over and over again. And what I love about this moment right here is that it's about the opposite of that. Um, because I don't spend my whole day thinking about anti-Semitism. I spend most of my day thinking about how to be a good person and follow the, what the teachings of my tradition teach me to do. And, and, and to be able to be here in this space right now um, with the support of the council and bringing this to the larger community means the world to me personally, and I can say for sure to our community as well. So thank you to the council for, for being uh, out front on this, it, it matters, and for all of your support. Um, and we are so glad to be part of the greater Montgomery County community. Hi, I'm Mimi Schultz. This is my husband, Bob Schultz. Hi. <laughs> Four years ago, we moved here from Nassau County, Long Island, and it was hard to leave our friends and family there and the Jewish community that we were very involved with there. But there's a little song, I believe it's Debbie Friedman, wherever you go, there's always someone Jewish. And we, we have been embraced by the, the Jewish community here. We live at Leisure World. We're very involved with the Jewish residents of Leisure World. And the motivation for moving here is our daughter and her husband and our grandchildren who uh, are part of Kehilat Parde Synagogue in Aspen Hill. And we feel very glad that we made the decision to come to Montgomery County for a lot of reasons. And one of them is the strength of the Jewish community and the diversity and um, just all the uh, awareness about people from different cultures, different faiths. So thank you for the proclamation today, okay? Can I say something? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have, we don't have the resume that all of you people have, but um, we've been here four years, as my wife said, and um, we've become part of the community, and, and we're active in the Bender JCC, uh, and uh, our daughter is a school teacher, special ed teacher in Montgomery <laughs> County. And a graduate of uh, the University of Maryland. So we're transplanted New Yorkers, proud to be Marylanders now. Well, fantastic. Thank you, everybody. And as a Nassau County native myself, uh, I love living in this neighborhood, right? So, so with that, we're going to read this proclamation. I can get the microphone. I'll kick us off. The County Council of Montgomery County, Maryland proclamation, whereas celebrating Heritage Months gives us an opportunity to learn about one another as we honor the richness of our diverse nation and strengthen the fabric of American society. And whereas Jewish American Heritage Month originated in 1980 when Congress passed a resolution which authorized and requested the president to issue a proclamation designated April 21st to 28, 1980, as Jewish Heritage Week. Since 2007, every U.S. president has issued proclamation for Jewish American Heritage Month 
encouraging all Americans to learn about Jewish heritage and contributions to the United States and Whereas the American Jewish community dates back to 1654, when a group of 23 Jews fleeing persecution at the hands of the Portuguese Inquisition in Brazil found refuge in New Amsterdam, now part of New York City. From that small group, the American Jewish community has grown to over 6 million, representing approximately 2% of the American population today and Whereas over the past 369 years, Jewish Americans have given to their communities and to this nation as loyal and patriotic citizens. They have proudly served in uniform, in elected office, and on our nation's highest courts. Jewish Americans have made enormous contributions to Americans' culture, scientific, artistic, and intellectual life, and have marched, petitioned, and boarded buses to demand civil rights and political rights for all. From women's rights, to voting rights, to workers' rights, American Jews have always pushed the United States to live up to its promise as a nation that upholds freedom and justice for all. And? Whereas Montgomery County has the largest Jewish population in the state of Maryland, accounting for 45% of Maryland Jews. According to the Berman Jewish Data Bank, Montgomery County has a Jewish population of 105,400, approximately 10% of the county's population. The Washington metropolitan area, with 295,000 Jews, has become the third largest Jewish population of a metropolitan area in the United States of America. And? Whereas now, American Jews are feeling vulnerable amidst a rise and anti-Semitism. The American Jewish Committee State of Anti-Semitism in America 2022 report revealed that 89% of Jewish respondents believed anti-Semitism is a problem in the United States with four in 10 American Jews stating that they have changed their behavior in at least one way out of fear of anti-Semitism. Sadly, we have seen a rise in anti-Semitism in Montgomery County as well, and? And whereas the strength of a society can be measured by how they protect their minority populations and celebrate their contributions, it is altogether fitting for the U.S. to once again mark May as Jewish, Aherit Jewish American Heritage Month. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the County Council of Montgomery County, Maryland proclaims May 2023 as Jewish American Heritage Month and be it further resolved that all residents are urged to learn more about the heritage and contributions of Jewish Americans and to observe this month with the appropriate programs, activities, and ceremonies signed by all three of us today. Thank you all. Thank you.
Okay, uh, thank you very much for that. We're now gonna have the next proclamation, which is to recognize Teacher Appreciation Day. Uh, that will be led by Vice President Friedson and the entire Education and Culture Committee. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. President, and welcome to guests. We are gonna get to our Teacher Appreciation Proclamation here in just a second. Before we do, we thought it would be a good exercise for all of the council members, all 11 of us, to say uh, a memory of a favorite teacher and one to two sentences maximum uh, about that teacher and what makes them so special in your life. And we'll start with, um, uh, we, can, we can start with the chair of the Education and Culture Committee. No, I, I'm gonna speak later, so I'll be quick. It was my fourth grade math teacher, Mr. Williams, who taught me that I had value. It was my, uh, uh, Carol Kearns, who was a principal and a vice principal at, uh, and a teacher at Gaithersburg, and his son and I were always friendly, and Mr. Kearns is the one who stopped by my store one day. He was on the Gaithersburg City Council, and he said, Sydney, we need young people to get involved in Gaithersburg. And as I tell people in those days, I fit that bill. Thank you. Great. Uh I'm going to do two. Um, they're both uh, currently MCPS teachers. Dan Hutton, who's a second grade teacher at Tacoma Park Elementary School and has taught in the schools for 22 years. And David Stein, who has been a teacher at MCPS <laughs> yes, uh, for 26 years at Paint Branch and Blair. And these two teachers are very near and dear to my heart because they have impacted our community and in particularly my family. Uh, my children had Mr. Hutton when they were in elementary school, both of them did and then both had Mr. Stein when they were in high school. Uh, my daughter is now a sophomore at BU and her major is poli sci and statistics and I blame Mr. Stein uh, for that. And I also, well, I will sort of name a third teacher which is my son who graduates next weekend um, and is a new school teacher. So thank you. You said two sentences, right? <laughs> Um, I'm going to say one very special person, and that's Miss Laura Horry. She was my ESO teacher in high school, and if it had not been for her, I wouldn't be here. So for all those high school ESO students like me who came to this country and did not speak a word of English, there is hope. Um, so thank you for, thank you. And she actually supported my campaign, and she's retired. Uh, but I'm still very in touch with her. When I was being deported, she actually also came in and helped me. So it wasn't just my teacher. He, she went all in for me, and I will never forget her. So thank you. Um, I'm, my favorite teacher, I'm going to talk about one of my daughter's teachers. Her name's uh, Emily Asofsky, and she's a Northwest High School teacher. And uh, my daughter has always, always been a bookworm. And uh, Ms. Sosofsky got a grant, the Text Alive grant, and took all the kids to uh, do Shakespeare. And so my daughter actually had to, was allowed to perform uh, Henry VIII, she was Henry, on the stage of the Sydney Harmon Hall. And it changed her life. And um, so I thank Ms. Sosofsky for that. Of course, my favorite teacher is my mother, is a former MCPS uh, teacher. I have to say that, uh, and I will continue to say that, but my favorite teacher memory uh, is second grade, Mrs. Pickles at Wayside Elementary School took us to the moon. Uh, the moon was the gym, and the space suit involved an upside down uh, paper bag uh, that had uh, a cutout in the front of it, uh, but, uh, and a moon bounce was gravity. But, uh, it really opened up all of our eyes and uh, showed what teachers can do. Uh, my most impactful teacher uh, is a guy named Dave Casamento, where I grew up uh, in East Meadow School District. Um, there we go. Uh, Nassau County. And uh, Mr. Casamento was the first openly LGBTQ person I knew and became a role model and a friend to this day. And it's all the more reason why we need to discuss those issues in the classroom. Mine was uh, ninth grade, uh, Mrs. Eagleton at Walt Whitman High School. She was my English teacher. Um, I was one of those classic middle students that uh, wasn't the best student in the class, wasn't the worst student in the class, kind of did the bare minimum, uh, was in that missing middle, and I think I invented quiet quitting at the time. Um, <laughs> she, um, she noticed that there was a lot more in me and would not let me do that, and pushed me harder than any other teacher had before, but did it in a way that was compassionate and that met me where I needed to be met at the time. And that 
really unleashed uh, what would then be three successful years at Whitman. And I'm convinced that it had not been for her support and seeing that in me, I probably would have tried to quiet quit all four years. So thank you for being here, all of our educators and happy Teacher Appreciation Week. My favorite memory of my teacher would probably be second grade, uh, Mrs. Chen, and this was at Beltsville Academic Center in Prince George's County. And I always got in trouble for talking. <laughs> and so um, I won't go into too much detail, but my mother did not like that I enjoy talking, but she always encouraged me to talk quietly and to learn how to write notes so I would not disrupt the class. <laughs> so I, I really appreciate Mrs. Chen for encouraging me to use my voice in the appropriate way, and it's certainly paid off. Um, well, as a former teacher myself and somebody who was inspired to become a teacher after having so many incredibly uh, impactful teachers growing up and going through the MCPS school system, it's so wonderful to see a room full of MCPS uh, uh, teachers. Um, I had a, I'm having a really tough time choosing, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go with um, Mrs. Adamson, uh, Vicki Adamson. She's uh, now an assistant principal at BCC, and I had her for one of my English electives when I was a student at. Blair uh, for an elective called American Studies. Um, and she was the English resource teacher, I believe, at the time. And uh, the um, environment that she cultivated in the classroom uh, stuck with me as I moved into teaching, um, really one of, um, of a, such mutual respect and a drive toward excellence, but also joy uh, about learning. Um, and she infused all of that into work that really imparted on us a lot of powerful life lessons about um, equity and social justice. And she did that without uh, talking at us. She did that by providing the right materials and the right space, um, the right learning environment. And that uh, very much inspired me uh, to this day. So I'd like to reflect upon Mark R. Brewer, who was my middle school um, English and history teacher for both seventh grade, and then he got switched to teaching eighth grade, so I ended up getting to have him for two subjects two years in a row. Um, in the school that was built in 1927 that my grandfather had also attended in my hometown. Um, and I am grateful for, for still having Mr. Brewer in my life now. Um, he uh, eventually went on to become a school principal and uh, and now an author. Um, and he'd sent me a copy of his book, Moments in History, People and Events Worth Remembering. And I, you know, I was thumbing through it and I was going to write a review for him. And, and then my sixth my oldest were in sixth grade at the time and they came home and there was some kind of kerfuffle where there was a dispute and disagreement and and they said you're going to take away our phones aren't you i said no you have to read this chapter on jefferson and adams and that's because it was a teachable moment about the conflict that those two individuals had had and how they never quite totally resolved it before they both died on july 4th 1826 so i like to think that mr brewer is still teaching today even though he is retired because those lessons are carrying forward in my own home thank you All right, well, that was good. Uh, good way to start this off. Uh, just uh, wanted to invite up, uh, we have our education and culture colleagues here. Want to invite up Jonathan Dunn, the Teacher of the Year 2022-2023. If he's here, Madeline Hannington, Joseph Bostic. Uh, Madeline is 2019 to 2020. Uh, Joseph Bostic, 2021 to 2022, uh, who's the assistant principal uh, at Northwood High School. Uh, and Madeline, English content specialist and teacher at Halley Wells, uh, Teacher of the Year 2019 to 2020. And then Jennifer Martin, who came with backup, uh, as we would expect. Welcome uh, to everybody who's here on behalf of MCEA, but Jennifer, please uh, come up and, and join us. Um, we're gonna hear from our guests in a minute. Just wanted to 
uh, express appreciation for all of our educators and our teachers of the year. We're really proud uh, in Montgomery County to have such terrific teachers here with us today and here uh, serving in our classrooms. Uh, and we know uh, being a teacher is not what you uh, do, it's who you are. And we really appreciate your commitment each and every day to our young people uh, and to our children and to our future. And so we really uh, appreciate it. I'm really excited. Let me turn it over to the chair of the Education and Culture uh, Committee, Councilmember Juanda. And I see uh, Ms. Pia Morrison for SEIU. Uh, I, I broke down in tears in the ENC committee talking about our paras for my daughter the other day. Also, awesome educators as well. And we th we we give you glad that you're here. Uh, I'm not going to read this. I'll, I'll be brief. So uh, I mentioned Mr. Williams, his name was Chuck Williams, actually a mentor teacher of, of uh, Jennifer, uh, I found out later. Uh, in his second career after being uh, flying helicopters in Vietnam, retired as a captain in the Army and came home and became an elementary math teacher at MCPS. And I met him in the 1990, uh, which can you believe was 32 years ago now or 33 years ago. Uh, I was a, a fourth grade student who had skipped first grade and so I was younger and I had been had really negative school experiences. You know, one of the things that I think we remember why it's so important to uplift great teaching and learning is because when you have a negative experience, um, it you really need those positive experiences. And I had started to believe that something was wrong with me, that I didn't have value, that when I talked or raised my hand like council member sales, I was doing something wrong, even though I had skipped a grade and I was advanced academically. And Mr. Williams was the first teacher who looked like me, but also the first teacher who told me that I did have value and that I had something to contribute and, and helped me channel my excitement and energy for learning. Uh, and that's what great teachers do. They have great power. Uh, they have great responsibility. Uh, and so I want to thank personally all the teachers that are doing that 162,000 student school system uh, every day to make sure from pre-K to career that our kids have what they need. There is no career if not for teachers. Um, that's the, that's the, one of the most important professions, and we have to value that. So I uh, appreciate you, and I'll turn it over to my colleagues on the ENC committee. Uh, first, I'll start with our teacher. Oh, and I have to say this. I have to acknowledge Christina Neidlinger, who is in my office, who is a teacher at Gaithersburg High School, and I stole her away, but she's still working on education, so don't be mad at me. Um, Kristen Mink. Thank you. And I'm going to also give a shout out to Chris Wilhelm, my chief of staff, um, who I also stole away. <laughs> um, former ESOL teacher and still working on education issues uh, here at the council. Um, I'll also keep it brief, but um, my I have great love and appreciation um, for all of our educators, for everybody who makes our schools run um, education. Our schools are the foundation of really everything, everything else that we have in society. We're, our kids are passing through our schools. They spend often more time um, with the adults at school than they do with their adults at home. Just incredibly formative. And because of that, of course, we use our, our schools as a waypoint to catch kids and address all kinds of other needs that are outside of their academic needs. Um, you know, from, from hunger issues to health issues, um, things that are going on at home, all kinds of things. And not just because it's convenient because it's there, but because because they cannot learn if we don't provide those things. So our teachers, our school staff truly carry uh, an enormous weight um, as, they, as they address all of these different needs uh, within the halls of their school building. And so uh, I am deeply grateful to all of you who are here today and all of you who you represent. Um, and, I, and I appreciate also, you know, all of the work that you do to help us to ensure that our schools uh, and that all of you are getting what you need to be able to pass that on uh, to, to the students that are the very future of our community. So thank you very much and happy Teacher Appreciation Week. Thank you. I also want to acknowledge uh, Board of Education member Grace River Oven is in the audience as well. Thank you, Gracie, for your leadership and all the members of the board. Um, appreciated hearing the stories of all of my colleagues. Each of us probably could have told many stories of teachers that have impacted us along the way. And that obviously has never been more important than right now. The term first responder um, really evolved during COVID. And I think it acknowledges what our teachers are. You are first responders. And uh, our children right now are crying for help in so many different ways. 
and you are among the first on the front lines to be able to provide the support and the love and the guidance that they need and that obviously influenced everybody on this dais and everybody in this room and everybody in this country. So we can never thank you enough for your dedication and leadership and we will be reading the proclamation momentarily. Thank you. Thank you so much, appreciate it. Now we're gonna turn it over to Jonathan Dunn, a teacher of the year. Um, it's a pleasure um, to stand before you uh, the second time uh, to speak to you as a body. I wanna thank um, the council um, for inviting us and for recognizing us today. I was asked to share br briefly remarks about my experience as an educator, so bear with me, I'll be quick. Um, but I've been teaching for almost 20 years, and my first year um, began at Cabin John Middle School in the year of 1999. And I remember walking through the halls and sitting in classrooms and directing kids and recognizing that I was the only person of color on staff. I was asked by the principal at the time, Mr. Dunn, what can we do to address, you know, the gap in terms of the achievement of our minority students? I said, you need to show them someone that looks like them. You need them to know and let them to see firsthand that there's opportunity that's available to them and you need to make it tangible. And how do you make it tangible? By putting a face in front of them, a face that has like experiences, a face that has, um, has lived through some of the very same challenges that they will have to endure. Now fast forward to the year of 2023 and yes, post COVID there are dynamics that are impacting the classroom. Um, students are wrestling with various challenges and teachers are wrestling with them as well. Um, and as we coexist in these spaces, I'm very well acquainted and reminded of why I entered education in the first place. Um, similar to Councilman Jawando, I remember every single negative word that was ever spoken to me in a classroom. I remember being called stupid in the classroom by a first grade teacher. I remember being one of a handful of minorities in that classroom and how that ripped away at my core. And in spite of my mom and dad pouring love and, and all of the empowering statements that they gave me, all I remembered every time I raised my hand or was accused of doing something that I didn't do, I remembered the negative statement. And we don't quite understand how words impact, but they carry, they carry a memory that can last your entire life. Um, it's almost like a post-traumatic stress. And that's what my learning experience was, if it weren't for the gift of two amazing educators. One, Mrs. Edith Pfister, who took a young man who was told what he couldn't be, and through the gift of the piano, allowed me to fall in love with classical music, taking me to the Kennedy Center every Thursday night. Her husband, who played in the National Symphony, both of them Juilliard graduates. They opened up an entire world to me. And I'm grateful for the gift of music, which was a, a, a way for me to access opportunities in higher education and learning. But I'm also reminded that as I stand here as an educator, that my dedication and commitment to the field is to ensure that no child ever had to endure the nightmare that I experienced as a kid. And oftentimes, thank you. Oftentimes we try to ignore the big elephant in the room. Implicit bias is real, snap judgments are real. People still will walk into a room and look at you and make a decision whether or not they're going to allow you to enter a space or even allow you to be heard or visible in a space. And in the year of 2023, I find it altogether unacceptable and I'm committed to making sure that no child has to endure that nightmare. With that being said, there are also some very present needs that are facing our community. Um, yes, on post-COVID, we have the emotional, the social-emotional, and all of those things that are very real and impacting learning. But there's also this piece of living in a space that, because of inflation and other things, it's so expensive. It's, it's literally a place where if you ever, I mean, my first three years in the county, I lived at home with my mom and dad, driving from Upper Marlboro, Maryland, all the way to Cabin John. Um, and when I think about that and the fact that that was 1999 and now you're dealing with median home prices in the neighborhood of, you know, for the first time, fours and fives and you're walking out the gate with debts and everything else, we need to make sure that people that look like me and look like the minorities and look like the diverse population that we live in in community have an opportunity to be hired by this community. Um, and that's very real. But at the end of the day, you know, teachers oftentimes, I think, get, get credited for their love and commitment to kids, but there is, there is that notion that we have these hierarchy of needs. And before we can meet the needs of kids, teachers too have to have their needs met. 
And that's a painful thing to acknowledge, but closed mouths don't get fed. So we're in a space right now where we have to really advocate and speak truth to those who have the ability to move a needle forward. It's one thing to give, it's one thing to give platitudes and kind words, but on the trenches when I'm dealing with a social emotional kid who's throwing things at me, a kid who's called me the N word, a kid who's dropped expletives in front of me, a kid who has literally at no fault of his own, he's only presenting what he's lived through in his life. It's not because it's him doing it, it's the spirit at work within him that's doing it. I'm not slamming the kid, but I'm slamming an environment that has made that experience permanent for him. And that's real. My experience is blessed. I'm grateful for the opportunity to have represented this county. I just want children to be okay. I want my colleagues to be okay. I want our world to be okay. And as we recognize the Jewish community today and that powerful sentiment, that powerful presentation, you know, it, we have to address the challenges that are facing not just our kids, but this entire community. I thank you for the opportunity to speak to you today. I thank you for the chance to be Teacher of the Year. <laughs> and thank you to this entire council for all that you're doing towards that effort. Well, we can't possibly be in the classroom for 180 days, but I think we got a window into why uh, he was a Teacher of the Year uh, awardee. Uh, and I think that uh, passion uh, is going to be tough to beat, but I'm going to turn it over to Jennifer Martin, uh, M MCA president, for a few words as well. Thank you so much, uh, Council Member Friedson. I really appreciate uh, this opportunity. And yes, it is hard to follow a passionate teacher like our colleague Jonathan, but honestly, um, I think there's a lot of passion in this room. So uh, I am not going to be brief, I'll just warn you. Um, so um, I do thank you, Council Members, for honoring MCPS educators during Teacher Appreciation Week with this proclamation in recognition of the contributions educators across this county make every day. I'm accepting this recognition on behalf of the 14,000 educators of Montgomery County <laughs> who struggle daily to meet the needs of our students and communities. On their behalf, I urge you to fully fund our schools so that we have the professional wages we deserve and the resources we need to lead students to success. Long ago, my own parents moved here, not in search of low taxes. They were seeking an excellent education for their children and drawn by the libraries, parks, programs, and other important public services in which Montgomery County so wisely invests. A generation later, I myself returned to Montgomery County when it was time to start a family, recognizing the value residents here place on education as a source of family and community strength. And because our schools are so impressive, I actually left my earlier profession and became an educator here. At that time, in the early 2000s, my children's teachers were touting how great it was to work in MCPS and how appreciated they felt. My, how times change. Only last night, I ran into a neighbor who has just left MCPS after 15 years of teaching. She was tearful as she described why she left the students she loved before the school year has even ended. Every week since the beginning of the year, she's had to cover at least three other classes at her middle school because there were no substitutes. An art teacher, she didn't receive some of her most important supplies and equipment until March. She witnessed and tried to support children who were traumatized and acting out, but sufficient administrative, mental health, and security support was not available. Recently, when a troubled student accidentally stabbed her, shocked, hurt, and bleeding, she called for help, but no one responded. Stories like hers, unfortunately, are not the exception these days in MCPS. 
the understaffing, the growing needs of our student population must be addressed if we are to stem the tide of resignations. And we must make teaching an attractive profession and MCPS a destination employer again. Therefore, we urge you to fully fund the MCPS budget. According to a recent study by the Economic Policy Institute, teachers face more than a 20% wage penalty when compared to other professions, even here in Montgomery County. While this is a national problem, the majority of school funding comes from local sources, so the responsibility for finding solutions lies here. We urge you to fully fund the MCPS budget and address this gross inequity that is largely born by women. What is more, over the past 20 years, real wages for educators and MCPS have fallen by 15 to 17 percent. We urge you to fully fund the MCPS budget so that we can attract and retain excellent educators and end the staffing crisis we currently face. The proposed MCPS budget will not end the teacher pay penalty, nor will it bring real wages to where they were in 2002. But it will at least move things forward. Without full funding, the three unions and MCPS may well be forced to renegotiate wage agreements we've reached after so much hard work and careful consideration. I'm also accepting this recognition in support of our students, who all deserve a world-class education. We urge you to fund the MCPS budget so that they will have improved learning conditions like fully staffed classrooms, well-supported teachers, and updated facilities. We know that powerful moneyed voices are speaking up against the 10 cent property tax increase for our schools. We also know that four of you council members received over $700,000 in campaign contributions from those same anti-taxers. Those groups are loud, but they are also foolish. Montgomery County's prosperity and livability have for generations been founded chiefly on the quality of our public schools. We urge you to ignore the naysayers and fully fund the MCPS budget. And students and teachers are not the only people who need you to fully fund our schools. On behalf of our psychologists, counselors, social workers, nurses, and other special service providers, we, I urge you to fully fund the MCPS budget so that we have professional wages, safe ratios, and reasonable working hours for giving critical care to our community. In support of our school bus operators, I urge you to fully fund the MCPS budget so that they can have reliable schedules and fair wages to ensure that our students are safely transported to and from school each day. I speak on behalf of the paraeducators who are in our classroom supporting us and supporting our students. I urge you to fund the MCPS budget fully because all these folks deserve competitive wages and the opportunity to develop strong relationships with educators and the school district, and that includes our administrators. They need access to the personnel and training that helps them build their ability as leaders to effectively run their schools. I am accepting this recognition in support of all county employees, the working people who strengthen the fabric of this community, this county. I am accepting this recognition today in support of our communities who reject false choices and who know that you do not have to rob Peter to pay Paul. It is economic nonsense to say that a 10 cent property tax increase will leave children starving but that a double digit rent increase is okay because that's just the price of doing business. I am accepting this recognition on behalf of our future, hopeful that this proclamation is not an empty gesture, but that it is followed by action from the council. Action, action to invest in our children some of whom will be the teachers, nurses, school administrators, and elected leaders of tomorrow. Now it is time to do what is right for teachers, students, and communities. We urge you to fully fund the MCPS budget. 
Real per pupil spending in Montgomery County is down almost $1,500 since 2008. The only way to combat this trend is to make meaningful investment in our public schools. Some of you have touted the thousands of votes you received in winning your seats. Well, those thousands of voters uh, want you to pass this revenue enhancement measure. And they sent you all a gift. We educators are generous souls. Countless numbers of us go into our own pockets each year to buy book bags and other supplies for our students. So, since you're giving us this recognition today, we have something for you too. You will find a petition here with over 9,000 signatures from Potomac to Poolsville, from Silver Spring to Seneca Valley, from Garrett Park to Gaithersburg, from Bethesda to Burtonsville. Residents are speaking up, urging you to fully fund the MCPS budget. Support is deep and widespread. And now you will hear from educators who are sitting in an uncomfortable truth. By seeking to make cuts in the MCPS budget, you all continue to reveal that you are not willing to do everything that is necessary for our kids, our communities, or our future. We are back from recess, and we are now going to move to our public hearing. And this is a public hearing on amendments to the FY23 to 28 capital improvements program, which is received from the county executive for the National Capital, National, Maryland National Capital Park and Planning Commission. Um, persons wishing to submit additional material for the council's consideration should do so before the close of business on May 16th. We have one speaker, and that is Ms. Diane Cameron, who is not here. And with that, this public, did she step out? <laughs> we, uh, Diane, hi. Thank you for sticking around. Appreciate your testimony as always. And whenever you are ready. Thank you very much. My name is Diane Cameron and I'm here testifying as an individual citizen today. I live in Kensington. And I support the testimony you will be receiving from Margaret Shope, who is, uh, as I am also with the TAME Coalition, TAME is the, stands for Transit Alternatives to Mid-County Highway Extended. And uh, specifically, I am in strong support of the county executive's request for uh, full funding for completion of the bus rapid transit system for Route 355 and by extension for the entire bus rapid transit network that is being planned for Montgomery County. And also, we are also here and I am here to ask that you uh, work with, with us and work with our communities to cancel the proposed M83 highway um, so that we can fully focus our transportation resources on the transit systems, walkability, and improved existing roads um, as our transportation priorities, not the building of new highways. Um, I also ask that as holistic um, thinkers and holistic leaders of our entire county, that you realize that there is a link between housing justice and transit justice. And specifically, I am in strong support of the HOME Act, the proposed 3% cap on rent increases, um, and that this is important as we build out and improve our transit systems, that we enable um, people who are construction workers, janitors, teachers, police officers, that we enable them to live in our, um, our urban communities that are served by excellent transit so that they are not pushed out to have to live in other places where they can afford their rent, rather keep their rent affordable, make, them make, their, make sure their rent is affordable so that they can benefit, all working people can benefit from the excellent transit systems and having been here today, the excellent school systems that we are investing in in Montgomery County. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Cameron. Uh, there are no other speakers 
for this item, and so this public hearing is now closed. Thank you. Uh, next is a public hearing on a supplemental appropriation to the FY23 capital budget and amendment to the FY23 to 28 capital improvements program regarding the Burtonsville Crossing Shopping Center. Council action is scheduled for May 11th. We do not have any speakers for this item, and so this public hearing is now closed. And so colleagues, we are now going to return to interviews for the Charter Review Commission. We had interviews earlier this morning with uh, registered Democrats, and we are now having uh, about to have conversation with registered Republicans and unaffiliated applicants. And so I would like to welcome down uh, Sherry Brett Major, Kenneth Delecki, David Notchteam, and Michael Persh, if you all here. And Mr. Delecki does not seem to be here. So we will start with the three of you. Thank you all very much for your interest in serving on the Charter Review Commission. Uh, we appreciate uh, your service to the county, uh, all that you've done and all that you wish to do. And so I have a number of questions I'll, I'll ask each of you uh, and then open it up for any other questions colleagues might have. Uh, and Mr. Persh will begin with you and then rotate through the questions. Um, uh, can you briefly describe why you are interested in serving on the Charter Review Commission and explain how your background will help you in this role? Okay, I'm a, a retired accountant. Um, I had an accounting firm in the McLean, Virginia area. Uh, we live um, now in Colesville, Maryland. Um, public service has always been something that um, I feel I like to be involved with. I've been on a number of boards um, with the um, American Institute of Certified Public Accountants and others. Um, I'm not used to speaking before the council, so give, bear with me for a moment. Um, I've taught um, uh, school, I taught to college at the University of Maryland uh, for um, over 20 years. Anyway, um, I um, feel that I can contribute uh, to the Charter um, Commission, um, and um, um, am interested in hearing what um, the other commissioners, I mean the other Charter Committee members, um, feel are important priorities. Um, um, public service again has been um, important to me throughout my career, and I study issues, um, I do research, and do my homework, and I think I can add something to the um, commission. Thank you. Mr. Nachstein? Nachstein. Uh, and if you can turn the microphone on, there's a button right in front. Nachstein, thank All you. Right. I have uh, resided in the county for almost 40 years now, and my kids went to school here. I uh, was a scoutmaster to, for a few years. I uh, had a career as an immigration officer uh, and then uh, worked in the Department of Homeland Security for a time before I retired and I've had some careers after that. I have not really been aware that there was a Charter Review Commission, but I started to look at their minutes and the, the reports that they file annually and I see that they consider some important issues that the, con the community raises and I believe I have a, a background of interpreting laws based on my law enforcement experience. I'm living in Leisure World and I'm on the board of directors of the uh, condominium community that I reside in. And uh, one of my tasks there is to review the charter document of the, uh, of the bylaws of the, uh, the condominium association. So I see it as sort of a, of a piece that really we're looking at Establish guidelines and try to figure out where they are potentially need a little fine tuning uh, and where things 
potentially are in fact because of the way they're written impeding what needs to happen uh, based on my reading of the minutes of the commission there are some lingering issues that have not been resolved that uh, will need to be re reviewed in the uh, coming four-year term and I think I can offer some uh, life experience if nothing else to help make the thank some you recommendations thank you very much Ms. Sherry Major, uh, Ms. Brett Major. Good afternoon. Thank you for the opportunity. My name is Sherry Brett Major, uh, and I'm I'm interested in in assisting and by serving on the Charter Review Commission, mostly because I love Montgomery County. I I appreciate the emphasis on on education. We saw what democracy looks like, uh, and the opportunities, and and the focus of really the entire county in improving the, the lives of its citizens through at multiple avenues, one of which is reviewing the county charter. Uh, so my background, why I think uh, in addition to just being interested and in, in wanting to, to serve and to participate and to help, uh, I'm accustomed to reading a lot. <laughs> I was a policy analyst where I reviewed, uh, I looked at site conditions uh, and and compared those site conditions to requirements. So, so I'm, I'm accustomed to reading a lot, long pages of, of code, judicial decisions, and looking at what the, uh, what the purpose of any actions are. Thank you. Uh, next question I'll ask, and we'll start with Mr. Knockstein. Nock um, what do you see as the most important issues facing the council? Uh, and turn your microphone on, sir. I know that there was uh, d this consideration of whether there should be a an increase in the amount of time that someone should reside in the county before they can be considered for. If you the, could speak up a little bit, please. I'm sorry. Thank uh, you. Whether someone should reside in the county for more than a year in order to be eligible to run for county executive or for council positions. Uh, and I think uh, that we saw recently in, the, in various campaigns around the country that there were some folks who were not necessarily carpetbaggers, but who had not been residing in the district or the state where they were campaigning. They had been brought in in order to have a comfortable face for the electorate to look at. Um, and I don't want to name names, but I think some of you can think of some of those folks. Uh, the idea that he, requiring a longer term of residence in the county would provide an ability then to say that someone is more familiar with the community, more familiar with the issues that are, are likely to be uh, encountered is something that we do need to consider. Uh, I'm certainly willing to discuss it with the other members of the, the commission. Uh, there are some, some others that uh, I know that were discussed, but I think that was perhaps the one that stuck, stuck out to me most as potentially uh, in order to align more with some of the other counties in the, in the state to increase that residency requirement. Sure. So thank, thank you. Ms. Brett Major. Thank you. Uh, so I appreciate a good challenge. Um, I can't tell you what's going to happen in the next couple of years, or you know, the uh, a report comes out every every other year, uh, and there will be eleven members on on this review commission, and and I would be the youngest one. I, I expect if if um, if allowed, I would be the youngest with the fastest learning curve. <laughs> Uh, but I come with no preconceived notions, but, but also recognizing trends, uh, the trend for the county population growing and making sure that there are adequate resources, you know, not, not just budget-wise, but, but within the code, within the, uh, the county charter to accommodate all of the, um, all of the desires of, of an increasing population. Thank you. And Mr. Persh. Uh, thank you. Um, I would uh, echo what, what the, my two um, interviewees had to say. Um, I have no preconceived notions um, 
as to what should be the hot buttons or hot topics uh, the commission should review. Um, um, I would like to, um, after uh, several meetings, we'll, we'll come up with, I guess, a list of recommended subject areas to look into. Also, we'll receive some input from the council. Um, so we certainly, I would certainly look at those, um, have an open mind as to what um, issues should be uh, looked at uh, and addressed by the commission. Um, I think I'll leave it there. Great, thank you. Uh, next question, we'll start with you, um, Ms. Brett Major. Uh, how would you position the board to work on issues related to social justice and racial equity? I have had some training on diversity, equity, and inclusion. I, I take it very seriously. I think it's, it's a, I, I think it's an important issue. As a woman in the sciences, I am keenly aware of how difficult some of these issues can be. You can hear I, um, you, you can hear my voice, <laughs> how, uh, how, how anxious I, I am from, from my background, and I can, I can sense that in other people too. I welcome all people to the table. Thank you. Um, a sense of fairness and um, equal uh, level playing field for all is an important um, a characteristic of me. Is uh, certainly a, a um, major belief of mine. Has been th my entire life. Um, I would um, look at any um, issue that the commission might face uh, that would further social justice and equity. Um, certainly look at it and um, I would do my homework and um, uh, respond um, accordingly. Okay. Well, when I read that question, the, the phrase that jumped into my brain was systemic racism. And the, uh, the, the patterns that have been built into very many parts of our society that are based on false assumptions about our equality and uh, false assumptions about the abilities of various people. Uh, I'm not sure that there's anything in the charter itself that needs to be addressed or re rectified or changed in any way to deal with that, but I would certainly want to ensure that we keep that in the back of our minds as we consider any proposals for changes that we don't create an opportunity for some additional systemic racism to occur. So. Thank you. Um, two, two more questions that are uh, very straightforward, uh, and we'll start with Mr. Persh. Uh, the commission typically meets once a month for one to two hours at a time. Will you be able to make the time requirements that are needed? Uh, yes, absolutely, yes. Okay. Yes, I will. Yes, uh, I will make myself available. And as well, I assume there's going to be more time in between that we would need to uh, to do to study up, or at least me with my learning curve. <laughs> and I would be available for that as well. Very good. Uh, and last question I have, uh, and we'll begin with you. Are there any potential conflicts of interest of which we should be aware? I don't believe and your yeah, microphone. Uh, I don't believe so. I know that my service on the Board of Directors of my conduct association might potentially have some interplay with what the county is up to, uh, uh, but I don't believe that it has any effect on the review of the charter itself. Thank you. I have no conflicts that I perceive. If, if I become aware of one, I will disclose and make available all the information. Very good. Uh, no conflicts. If uh, one, if something comes avail, comes uh, occurs, I will certainly let the, the council know. Very good. Well, those are all the questions that I have, and I don't see my colleagues um, uh, with any questions uh, on their end. So I just want to say thank you uh, for putting yourselves forward uh, to serve on the Charter Review Commission. Uh, you know, the, the county council gets to select six members, and the county executive selects five, and there are party affiliation considerations as well. So appreciate you putting yourselves forward. Uh, we are working through the budget process right now, so we'll be making these decisions um, when once we are able. But thank you all for, for joining us this afternoon and for serving the community. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. I, I don't know what I was hearing over here. Sorry. Um, 
So with that, colleagues, um, I need a motion to go into closed session to discuss the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or performance evaluation of an appointee, employee, or official over whom it has jurisdiction pursuant to Maryland Code, General Provisions, Article 3-305B1I. The topic is a personnel matter concerning one or more specific appointees, employees, or officials. Do I have a motion? Yes, so moved. Uh, moved by Councilmember Ludke, seconded by Vice President Friedson. All those in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you very much, and we are adjourned. <laughs>